That's good. Let's see how they do with the wind. <laughs> good morning. It is a pleasure to be back in Iowa. Thank you for that introduction. And Eric, that was amazing. Uh, what a beautiful day for such a wonderful occasion. And uh, here I am to offer a few thoughts to the 2008 graduating class here at Luther College. I think my familiarity with Luther College prior to the summer of 2006 was roughly as thorough as my knowledge of as thorough as my knowledge of J.R.R. Tolkien's *The Lord of the Rings* in the spring of 1999, when I was first told that the movies were being made. Namely, um, yeah, that's like the Phantom Toll Booth, right? In fact, the first time I had any notion of the existence of this place was when I put on that sweatshirt for the first time with Luther written proudly in the ubiquitous college font on the front of it. It was indeed part of the wardrobe for my character, the true life graduate of this institution who I was portraying in our movie, The Final Season. If Alex Trebek would have popped out of the trailer and quizzed me about the place I was proudly representing, I likely would have replied, um, 1517, the 95 Thesis Germany, uh, the printing press, challenging the papacy thereby exhausting almost my complete recollection of everything I had learned at UCLA about Martin Luther. I might have lamely offered as a fallback St. John's Lutheran Church in Laporte, Indiana, where my wife, three daughters, and even myself eventually were baptized. Nope, Kent Stock, who you'll hear from in a moment, along with one of our film's producers, would have to inform me about the important smaller college with a proud history and rich tradition in the heart of the first in the nation state of Iowa. So I wore my Luther College regalia with a newfound confidence over the next six weeks of filming, thereby immortalizing my relationship to this place and becoming a sort of forever ambassador of the school to generations of Americans who will watch the movie and be exposed to the values and lessons that one of its son's lives has to offer our country and the world. So it seems altogether fitting and proper that even at this late stage, I actually see it. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Cool, now at least I can say that I did, you know, see it and say about Luther College that, you know, it looks pretty good. Folks ought to check it out, it's pretty cool. It's in Iowa and it's cool and it looks pretty good. When actors are given the microphone and asked to say something meaningful, there's often the very real possibility that folks will be left feeling as though they are trying to fight the effects of a heavy dose of Lunesta while watching a live rookie chainsaw juggling competition. But from the boy who played Mikey in The Goonies Who Never Say Die, from the man who played Rudy, 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 <laughs> who said, I've been ready for this my whole life. From the bodybuilding Douglas in 51st Dates, whose pension for protein sakes would no doubt be pumped up for the challenge of this occasion. A few thoughts of a more serious nature about what it means for me, Sean Astin, to see all of you graduate here today at this time and place may be worth the risk. And so I offer this thought, this theme, Jury duty. If everyone eagerly served jury duty, would there be less crime? Would there be more to talk about at barbecues? Would we watch the news with more immediacy? If everyone cared more about jury, jury duty, would we spend more time in church? Would the habit of sitting in judgment of others in court make us more judgmental of ourselves in life? Would compassion flow more fully to the rest of us not on trial, to everyone else we see and maybe even to those we don't? The law is defense, the backstop against which the mess of society gathers to ooze out solutions and to settle scores. But graduates, you are the offense that societies, that our society's full frontal assault against the ills of our time Graduates, you are the front line of attack that our civic life deploys in the service of a much brighter future. As in most wars, you will suffer the most, as time and failure, sickness, complacency, greed, amnesia, and sloth 
Fire back at your idealism and innocence, naivete, curiosity, and whimsy. Some of you will fall. Some of you may yield to the forces of comfort and satiety. Some may buckle under the burdens of responsibility, obligations, confusion, or apathy. But among your number are those who will embrace the knowledge and training you've received throughout the course of your primary, middle school, and high school educations. You will arm yourselves with the tools and skills and training you've acquired and nurtured and honed here at Luther College. You will accept the truth that you stand in the vanguard of this nation with the awesome opportunity and the rightful duty that is laid at your feet to rise up and meet the future as present to stand strong in the face of a world which presents itself to you in greater peril than at any time in human history that has come before us. It is in actual fact entirely up to you to link arms with your brothers and sisters, sisters across the country and around the world, to see yourself in their eyes and to determine together that this life, this planet, this nation will not crumble before our very eyes. That you, each of you, and every one of you will accept the mission that divine providence places before you to realize that every thought you have, every idea created in your minds is a gift from the centuries of human suffering and all the cumulative achievements of mankind. The painful truth of now is that the world is throbbing in agony. Not since the Middle Ages has the length and breadth and depth of human suffering and barbarism consumed our species as it is at this very moment all over the world. Global food shortages, the squandering of our natural resources, our environment is being eviscerated by the reckless destruction of our delicate ecosystem. We all suffer from the willful negligence of the worldwide community of nations to cooperate with one another, to stem the grim tide of unimaginable, unimaginable calamity that is beginning to wash over us. And so it falls to you. You have no choice but to steel yourselves for a life of challenge, a life of pushback against the many systems which may not be designed, but nonetheless function to frustrate progress, to shunt development, to deny improvement. But there is good news in the truth that you, 2008 graduates of Luther College, are in fact ready for a life of leadership, a life of unwillingness to accept mediocrity, pettiness, half measures, or failure. You begin now a life of awareness that the government is you. That public service is the oxygen that our national life must breathe lest it suffocate in the vacuum of indifference, opportunism, and hate. Jury duty. We are not pawns in a system forced to attend, penalized with minutes, hours, and days lost uh, of productivity and mirth. Jury duty. Graduates, look to your defenses, but know this. It is time for you now to go on offense, to attack, to begin the awesome adventure of your adult lives in solidarity with me and your parents and teachers, this faculty, your friends, your families, your classmates, in a partnership with all who cross your path in work, in love, and in life. Carve out the goodness we need in the world. Set the patterns and trends and habits that will yield throughout your lives the value, the satisfaction, the results that history obligates you to. Now you have your mandate. So though it is time for fun, time to relax and time to enjoy your day, it is also urgently time for you to act. For as Samwise Gamgee would say, there is some good left in the world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. I offer you now the man who I was uh, proud to be able to portray, whose spirit uh, I was able to try and capture, at least for some small portion of his life, uh, your very own, the inimitable, the definition in my mind and eyes of the very nature of success, Kent Stock. <laughs> 